Welcome to the January 2023 plan with me. If you're new here, my name is Canova. If not, welcome back. Happy New Year, you guys. I am very excited to do this very simple but impactful January setup. I wanted to first talk about the structure of this particular setup. I decided to go back to a setup structure that I did in January 2021 through Atomi Spreads. It is a faux Dutch door. I love this setup for the cover setup because it's an efficient use of the journal. It's clever in a way, or at least I think it's clever. You'll see the details here in a minute. There'll be a peekaboo calendar and we're going to use those folds and use this artwork uh, to its most effect. So it's not going to be a lot of artwork happening in this particular setup, but the artwork is going to be very impactful for the overall spreads. Now the overall theme for this spread is patina or vert de gris as they would say and I found this incredible photo on the Instagram page of Tommy Smythe. He's a Canadian interior designer that I love. He uh, used to be on a TV show with uh, Sarah Richardson, uh, Canadian HGTV. I think it's some of the the best design television. You guys should check it out if you haven't seen it. The show was called like Sarah's House and she designs all these different types of homes. A lot of them that she either rents or sells or lives in personally. And Tommy is her co-designer. His Instagram page is a delight and I definitely recommend you taking the time to check it out. There was a great photo there of this wall in France and it actually had a very interesting story that I didn't actually, I didn't actually read the caption when I uh, saved the photo. I just thought I, I love this. This is a great idea for a bullet journal theme. I saved it a while back and I decided to pull it out now. Just something about it. It was just perfect for the present. The journal has this sort of travel and wanderlust theme and you know, what's better than Paris? To create this faux Dutch door, I folded in two pages towards the center. It's gonna be easily folded out to look inside to the calendar and I'm gonna use the underside of the flap for my line a day. It is a very efficient use of space and this artwork, you're gonna see it throughout the month, which I absolutely love. So I decided to recreate the image from the photograph on Instagram. This is a rough sketch, of course. This is a detailed, beautiful, intricate piece of architecture. I am just rendering it very quickly into my bullet journal, but keeping as much of the image detail as possible. I pre-sketched this uh, without much care. I did, however, mark out the, um, the, the page into halves, thirds, etc., so that I could get all of the image on the page because it wasn't the same scale as my bullet journal when I printed it out. After drawing everything, I decided to go over everything with uh, Pigma Microns. I use various sizes throughout this, depending upon the image in the journal. Rendering this drawing took a little bit of time, but I think that it's well worth it when you consider that this is basically the singular decorative image for my bullet journal setup for January. I'm going to see it a lot, I'm going to use it a lot, so the time I spent on this drawing was well worth it for me. Because I decided to askew making it super detail and look exactly like the original drawing it made making this drawing a lot freer so if you are looking at it and thinking well I can't draw I wouldn't really worry about it I would say give it a try try to you know create the distinctive shapes that you see in the drawing you can still get the same effect 
So once I printed out the image, the caption was still there. And that was when I actually read it. It was this uh, story about Keith Haring, which actually is an artist that featured largely in my graffiti setup a while back. So I thought this was so interesting. I, I like Keith Haring and actually went to an exhibit at the Brooklyn Museum and saw some of his work. All of that aside, the caption talked about how when Keith Haring had passed away, he was um, he was cremated, but a bone from his remain was given to Yoko Ono, and I guess it was requested that she, you know, place this somewhere at some point. And at least from the caption, it seems it was at her discretion that Keith Haring didn't ask her to place it at some place in particular. And as it turns out, um, supposedly this particular wall, this particular place in Paris was where she left it. Uh, I thought it was um, pretty cool uh, being a Haring fan that um, he or part of him was left there at this particular spot in Paris. I don't know how true that is, but I definitely thought it was intriguing and interesting and added a bit of mystique to this particular choice for my journal. All right, back into the details. So opening up those two side flaps to create my monthly calendar. This is a large size calendar that I can write down key things like birthdays and dates I want to remember. I like to have a monthly calendar just so I can like jump right in and see the things I need to write away. The side flaps, if you open up the full page, will be my line of days. I go in at the end of each day and I write a line about what my day was like. I have been discovering that Sometimes I want more than one line a day, so I'm still calling it a line a day, but it's just going to be like a short little journal entry, one or two lines, and so I'm using both sides of this flap, and I went in and traced all those lines with the Pigma Micron. The sides of the internal flaps of the calendar are going to have trackers. I had been avoiding using trackers because I wasn't using them, but I think I really need them for the month of January, so we're gonna try to use them again. On the opposite side is my bills tracker. I, I need a place so that I don't forget when to pay certain bills, and this basically is like my dashboard. It's got everything I need right here. The overall colors for this setup are green and black. As you can see, all the uh, lettering you will find for the most part is done in black. I'm using my stamps here to stamp in the numbers for this calendar. I find stamps an efficient way to do things when you want things done neatly. I do prefer when the um, using acrylic blocks because I can better place the numbers but I wanted to use this particular font for this setup, so I had to lean in. So I stopped using a grid line space setup and I started using um, a ruler that I made, but then in an Archer and Olive box that I got, I received a grid line spacing setup and I used that. I highly recommend you going in and creating your own ruler. I will provide a link in my comments at the bottom of this video where you can find a video where I talk about that ruler setup rather than a grid spacing guide. So my weekly is going to feature a ledge that I will see at all times. It will have a calendar, a focus, and probably a quote or something on the side. For my weeklies, I use the Alistair method. It is the most efficient use for me personally. On one side are the dates. That's where I'll put important dates, appointments, the things I need to remember for that particular week. And on the opposite side, it will feature a list of tasks. I use uh, symbols to decide what date a task is complete. When a task is complete, I'll put an X, a dot to plan what that task is. And if I don't finish it, then a migration, a little Pac-Man, if you will. 
So I'm starting to set up some very specific trackers for the month of January. I think of January as a month of reflection. I no longer set resolutions in January. I use that time to think and really reflect. This year, I decided to use this thing called the yearly compass. You look back at 2022 and you look forward to 2023. It asks and guides you through a series of questions. This was something a TikToker was talking about and I looked into it and thought this is amazing. I'm gonna give this a try and I highly recommend you do it as well if it interests you. But because I am spending time reflecting, I need space to do that. I also, um, after doing the yearly compass, thought there was a few things I needed to sort of look at before I started to lay down my goals. I, I There's a tab here. I hate when I do that, when I forget to take something out and then I trace over it and then I have to do it again. There are always mistakes when I'm setting up these journal setups. They are never... Um, I don't know if there's ever been a setup where there were zero mistakes. You find a way to fix them or go around them. Like I said, just be easy with yourself is uh, my motto. Though sometimes when I make those mistakes in the past anyway, I have really sort of beat myself up about them, <laughs> at least in my head. I'm really upset. But no more of that. We are. We are moving forward in 2023 and embracing our mistakes because sometimes they lead to better things. All right, so this is my mood tracker. We are leaning into this idea of earth degree. Um, I haven't talked too much about it, but when you have things that are made of bronze and copper, usually like a statue, something that's exposed to the weather, you you see this patina build up on the outside of those particular um, pieces of artwork or statues that honor people. And I find that it's so beautiful. And I do believe this is all done purposely. We, The artist knows that it's going to get this beautiful patina on it. For this mood tracker, I decided to draw just another image I found on Instagram and I am I'm going to patina it over the course of the month. I am breaking it down to, into sort of slices and I am going to use um, my Distress Oxide ink to sort of color in the areas to show the different types of patina. All right, time to paint. I typically avoid watercolor paint in my journal. The journal is not equipped for this type of paint. It takes a, a quite a bit of water and water degrades the pages. But for this particular effect, what I was looking for in terms of how it looked, I felt like watercolor was the way to go. I, I chanced it and um, we'll see how it turns out. I started with a gray paint because I wanted the I didn't want the paper to be white. I wanted it to sort of have this uh, aged effect to it. And then I went in with two different types of blue watercolor, one uh, more sky blue and then another more turquoise. I did not use actual green in this particular setup. So I decided to make my own decorative paper. I am using a hand embosser to do so. I wanted to recreate that sort of textured decorative effect that you see on the side of the building. I wanted you to really be able to see and feel the texture. And this is what I'm going to see primarily in my weekly setup. It's just a sort of, I guess, homage to the idea on the cover page for this particular setup. The embossing folders are really small, so I couldn't cut out a single piece. So I created these sort of tiles that are rendered on the side of it. I wanted a bit of flexibility in terms of pulling this together, so I used glue and I let it dry and then I went in with a crafting scissor and cut off the excess along the edge of the ledge. 
Now you can see what it looks like once it's dry. The paint looks really bold when it's wet, but watercolor, once it dries, has a more faded color. If you want something bolder, I recommend um, using a different type of paint. I wanted this sort of old looking effect and I got it. When doing that though, it means that the ink, when you paint over that ink, it's still there, but it's going to look a bit faded because it has all that paint on top of it. I'm going in with a copper color Uniball Signo and I'm retracing not everything on the image, but quite a bit of it to recreate these sort of highlights, a little bit of sparkle on the page. It just adds a little something. So I had a stencil that I, I like to use stencils for the, um, the text, but the stencil was too big. So I recreated the text by hand in my journal. I did it on the cover page and I'm also doing the exact same text inside the journal. I go over it again with the copper Uniball Signo to create the, um, the color. Uh, that matches the front. So everything matches and comes together. I was thinking that I would paint the edges of this page with some paint to create the same effect that I had on the cover, but ultimately I decided not to. If you haven't seen my 2023 20, setup, I'll link it in the description box, but let's talk about the January 2023 setup. I am embracing this idea of maximalism done minimally or minimalism in some months but this month I would say maximalism done minimally this was done efficiently I think this is an efficient use of the artwork and time this is going to be a workhorse of a spread for me it's jam-packed with a lot of things I need for the month but in terms of the setup it's pretty minimal all right, if you made it this far, like and subscribe. Au revoir.